CataractCoach.com. White cataract with an iridoplasty. Learn how this surgeon saves the day and rescues this case. Our guest surgeon is Dr. Vipul Arora from India. This patient started to have cataract surgery with another surgeon who ran into a lot of complications. Uh, iris prolapse. You can see the sutures that are placed there temporally. And then the patient was referred the next day to Dr. Arora to address this situation. So you can see we've got a challenge here on our hands. So he's trying to see if there's any kind of uh, mobility there on the iris. Let's put some iris hooks in. You can see the capsule has been stained with tripan blue dye. And the lens capsule was open, so the whole lens became opacified. That was with the previous surgeon. And now a cystone can be used to really finish up that capsule opening, make a proper capsulorexis. And you can see there's already some um, fibrotic change here. The capsule doesn't look like it's uh, super strong either. Maybe a little bit of zymer weakness, a little bit of wrinkling as he's trying to make that opening. But he does a beautiful job here. And using just the cystotome creates a nice round capsulorexis. Very good. A little more viscoelastic. And now time for some phaco. So here's the phaco probe going inside the eye and a nice chop, beautiful chop there. And then rotating it around and see what we got and get these pieces out. Now, of course, we have to fix the cataract, but in addition, we also have to repair the iris. So there'll be an iridoplasty here. And good job in taking out the cataract. Now you notice the original decision there is temporal with the three sutures in it, those placed by the other surgeon. So Dr. Roy is now having to operate superiorly. Patient has a bit of a brow issue and therefore it's a little bit hard to access. That's why the eye is slightly infraducted. But taking his time, he's able to get this whole cataract out and then nice and easy. And then we're going to finish up putting in the lens. And then of course, the last step is gonna be the iridoplasty. Now this iris has been damaged sufficiently that you're really not gonna have a whole lot of iris sphincter muscle left or any kind of pupillary reaction. So you wanna choose an appropriate pupil size. So probably about four millimeters is the sweet spot, maybe three and a half on the small side. So as the last piece of the lens come up, you can see those take, come up quite easily and quite nicely. And I also like the use of the iris hooks here. Now in this case, I think the iris hooks are a better choice than putting a ring in the eye because that iris is already damaged and you can't really count on that. So there's the lens in the, in the uh, capture bag. And now here comes the pupiloplasty. So using micro forceps to grab. And you notice Dr. Rohr has changed his seating position. And now passing looks like a 10 proline on a long needle and then docking it into that hollow bore needle and pulling it out the paracentesis. And then you can do this uh, pupiloplasty, just tying a couple of sutures. A few interrupted sutures ought to do it. You'll see after this first suture goes down, he's using his micro forceps. This is that, uh, looks like a four throw pupiloplasty. So one, two, let's see, is it three, four? Three, and here it comes again, maybe one more. Four, yeah, so the four throws really uh, helps in keeping that knot cinched down. And you can see, look at that, that's a much nicer result. It looks like one suture is probably pretty good. And now the ends are cut. You could do another suture and to help close up that hole, but in this case, just put in an air bubble. Thanks for watching these videos. And remember to go to cataractcoach.com and sign up for a free daily email. We'll send you an email every day with a great video like this and other surgical pearls that'll make you a better surgeon.